Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Welcome, welcome again from the, uh, the Power Metrics Bunker. Um, actually, at the end of this, I'm going to let you see kind of a little bit behind the scenes of what's been going on around here. I'm going to take the camera and kind of show you what our bunkers look like uh, here uh, for a while. So, uh, so here we are, back on the COVID series again. And the best part this morning was we were trying to remember how long this had been going on. Because in the beginning, Chris is like, yeah, let's, uh, we'll run this thing for a couple of weeks. And it'll be, it's a great idea. And we're like, yeah, we're in our seventh week now. So uh, it's been going on a little longer than we thought. Um, but thankfully, you guys have sent us in uh, some things you wanted to see. That's what today is. This was a request from uh, customers. So that's what today's uh, webinar is about, is uh, you guys asking. So the series now, today we're going to talk about 3S, uh, Thursday. Thursday is going to be pretty cool. What we're going to do is you're going to have to guess what the metering problem is. And so Mullins has put together all these different air scenarios from all these different meters, and he's going to show them to you. And then on the chat, if you'll chat in and see if you can say what the problem is, we're going to see just how good you guys are out there, all right? So we're doing a guess the, uh, the meter issues, metering issues on Thursday. Next Tuesday, we're going to do a 6S versus a 9S. Okay, we're going to look at the billing issues between the two and differences in those. And then next Thursday, we're actually going to do a virtual tour of Power Metrics because we have a lot of people that say, yeah, I'd love to. I wish I could get there. I wish I could come out there. Just the, com the company won't spring for me to make the trip yet. I'd love to. We've had so many people would like to come visit us. So we're going to give you a virtual tour. And I can tell you, you'll really want to see that. So, uh, so the virtual tour is coming uh, the following Thursday. And so that gets us through the next four, okay? And then, and then uh, today what we're going to do is, remember, 3S, so we're going to be showing the connections on a 3S. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to uh, verify, of course, the site accuracy, which is what the equipment does. Then we're going to do some, uh, some error scenarios, missing some primary currents, missing some secondary currents. And then we're also going to do, uh, we're simulating both 120 volt and 240 volt today, okay? So we're talking about a 3S meter. Well, in the Power Master, there are two service types that you can use for a 3S meter. Okay, if you see on the left there, that is the uh, service type. Uh, it is the first service type choice uh, for us on the Power Master, and that is if you're going to use two flexes. If you use the two flexes, remember, both of the flexes, and polarity-wise, are going in the same direction. And you say, well, wait a minute. Uh, I've got, for that 3S meter, I've got one conductor going one way and one conductor going the other way through that same CT. If I put them both in the same direction, that's not going to work. The Power Master knows. The Power Master, we've got it set up so that if you put both flexes, both of them uh, polarity-wise, they're both in the same direction, the Power Master will turn that B phase 180 degrees out, and then all the tests will come out correct. Okay? Now, there is on the right side there, there is a second option. And you can physically create that, you know, I'm going in one direction one way and one direction the other way, so how do I pick it up? So you can physically, on the, on the, on the right there, you can figure eight your flex. And when you figure eight a flex, I've got a, a, uh, I've got a 40 inch, inch flex right here so that we can show it. And I'm going to go between here and here. If, we, if, we, if you remember, these are directional. The arrow goes in the direction of the current, okay, or towards the load. So if I figure eight this, so now it's going one direction for the top hoop, and it's going a different direction on the bottom, right? So if I were to take this, So one direction at the top, and I go a different direction coming in the bottom here. So now my arrow is going one direction at the top and the opposite direction at the bottom. And that is how you can use one. And you'll notice on the service types it says PC, that's for primary current, which is in for you and me out in the field. That's my probes, okay? So, I'm, so one, I'm using one probe, one PC. The other one, two PC, is using the two probes. Okay, so you can see this is how you would do it if you were going to do a, uh, with, one, with one single probe, you would figure eight it. If you're using two of them, you're just going to put them in the same direction. And that's how I'm going to test this. I'm going to use two of them. And I'm going to put them in the same direction. So I've got my A phase flex right here. I'm going to put it in here. Arrow is going to the right. Current's going to the right. And then I've got my B phase flex right here. 
Don't want that wire running through the flex. We try and keep those flexes clean. No little secondary uh, wires or anything inside those pad mounts running around. You want to try and keep what's inside this flex clean, right? So I'm going to go here. Arrow again, going to the right. So therefore, when I get ready to test this, I'm going to choose the uh, service type that has the two PCs, right? So I'm going to go with the two PCs. So let's go over here now, and we're going to do a, we're going to start testing. So first thing, what I wanted to show you is the difference between, before I make my connections, I'm going to show you, remember we talked about the two service types? So I just want to show you on the Power Master itself. So I went ahead and went into my site I've already created, but in case I, I chose edit site so I could just show you this so I can change the service type. We'll go back to it. So if you look right here, you see the two service types. So I got a one PC at the top. That's the figure eight. Two PCs at the bottom, okay, is, is what I'm doing here today. I'm using two of the uh, flexes, okay? So now I'm going to select. So, here we go. So let's go over here to our connections, okay? So um, this 3S, uh, te this test switch that I've got here for my 3S, I've got my two voltages, A and B, A and B here, okay? And then I've got my current right here. Remember, it was two voltages, one current. So I've got my one current here in the center, which has got my shunt and my return, okay? So... I'm going to make my connection right here with my duck bill in here. So there I've got a duck bill is in, close in my shunt, so I'm good on my current. And then remember my voltage is A and B, I'm going to come right here and go A. And B. And then, of course, I'm going to need my pulses before it's all over with. Okay, so you can see my voltages, A and B, my current right here, two voltages, one current. So my A is right here. Okay? Okie doke. So now we're going to go into the... Integrated site test. You can see my service up at the top. It's got my two PCs, so we know that's correct. So now I'm going to, and you, you know me, I always go 30 seconds or three revs. So I'm going to come over to here. And I'm going to make that 30 seconds or three revs on my customer load test and then leave everything the same. No double wrap. So I'm not going to check the double wrap box. If I did, I'd have to check that double wrap. If you don't, you'll learn quickly to check it because it'll throw everything off. Okay, so now we're going to go next. Okay, so, so now you see here, I'm showing a two flexes, one flex and one flex. You noticed on the service types we, we showed before, I'm just going to go through this, that the B phase comes and runs around and goes the opposite direction because we said, remember, we got two conductors running the opposite way through the same CT. Okay. So this is correct for us. We're going to hit next. Our vectors look good. It's a summation you can see there. VAB. So here we go. Let it beep twice, the Ray Gore rule, or just the Ray rule. Okay, so test complete. You can see in the bottom, we didn't get any kind of a message of saying it didn't meet within the, uh, the range that we said is pass or fail. So it says everything's okay, test complete. We can see here, 99.967, we can live with that. So we're going to hit next test. The 
Okay, it's always going to show it before, before each test. Before the meter test, it shows you the color diagram. And then before the CT or PT test, it's going to show you the uh, color diagram. So we're okay there. So also on our CT test, it fell within what is our accepted range of pass or fail. It came at as 0.71% ratio error. I believe any of, us, any of us could live with that in the field, 0.71% out. Um, so it gave us a pass in green here, so everything looks good. So we will hit done. Anytime you hit done or continue, date and time stamps, whatever it is that you hit done or continue on, that's now been date or time stamped that you can go back and recall the data and take a look at it. Okay? So um, let's go ahead and do a, a phantom load test on this uh, meter as well. And um, one thing I want to mention when I go over here and make this, these connections are, yeah, we're lucky. We've got a, uh, a nice uh, test switch here. But in some cases with your 3Ss, you don't have a test switch. So uh, I'm going to make Jarrett man by moving around between all these cameras. So we do have these meter adapters that you can use, right, where you would pull the meter, plug it in here, and just plug this into the socket, and it gives you a test switch at the bottom. So if you want to get one of these, you could also get one of these to, to uh, use with your 3S's if you don't have a test switch, okay? So we can also get you one of these, all right? So now we're going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a phantom load test. So I'm just going to go to meter test, number two, phantom load. And I've got one set up in here that I created. A 3S. And so you can see here. Then I'm running, uh, I'm running five instead of two for speed for us for today. And I'm only running uh, three, three, and one on my pulses also for speed today. Okay? So I'm going to hit conti continue. So we've talked about these jumpers in the past uh, with other meter forms that we've tested. So this is no different than the others. Remember, it's in the white, out the black. So it's out the black and back in the white to the test kit. So we're going to drive our current here at the bottom of the duct bill because the black and the white are separated electrically, right? We've got a layer of insulation between the two so I can get a flow in and out or out and in. And in this case, it's the out and in because I'm driving and not reading. So I'm going to drive the current black at the bottom. I'm going to hit it here at the bottom. When I do, I need to get, o get over here because I'm opening up. First thing we do, remember, we're going to do this test is open up my shunt because I don't want the CTs to provide the load anymore. I'm providing it with my load box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I'm opening this up. I've taken the CTs out of it, and I'm using the load box, and I'm going to drive here. But how do I get over there? I've got an open circuit. So we use our jumpers again. And remember, we always come at the bottom. We always come at the bottom of the same phase on the switch. We always want to get on the bottom of the, the bottom of my return blade. Because the handle is always in the way at the bottom when I make my connection. So on the same phase, I go at the bottom of the return and the top of the shunt. So that my current hits here, right? Jumps over the jumper, goes into the meter. And when it comes back out the meter, back into here, it goes right back into the white and back into the test kit. Okay? So I've got my jumpers on there. So let's go ahead and hit continue. There we go.
You've seen this many, many times in your life, full load, power factor, light load. I've got it set up for three, three, and one to run through them pretty quickly for us, okay? This is where we're using our load box to provide the phantom load test. The test we ran before was the customer load test. And they're just what they say. The phantom load test is I'm providing a phantom load and driving it through there, so that means I need a load box. So if you want to perform a phantom load test, you're going to need a load box, uh, just like you have to have it in the test board in the shop. So if you're at... Oh, if you're out in the field and you want to perform a phantom load test, you're going to need a load box, okay? The customer load test, you don't have to have a load box because you're using the CTs and everything to provide your currents that you're going to use to, to perform the test, okay? Already did. <laughs> <All right. laughs> it isn't often I get to get my ones. I got my ones on them. So are you sleeping through this webinar on me? What? Somebody on the chat needs to give Mullins a hard time, by the way. <laughs> now, the slow poke light load. Greens are good. That means it fell within the range that we said was pass or fail when we set the kit up. And we set these test kits up. You get a free day of on-site training. So when you buy a kit from us, we come out there and we'll set it all up. You tell us what's pass or fail on your CTs, pass or fail on your meter. We set all of that up in there for you, show you how to set up, and we'll get, even set some sites up for you, and then we'll go out in the field with you and do some testing, okay? So we show up at your site. So from what was set up in this kit, since we're seeing all greens, it must have fallen within what was the acceptable range for pass or fail, okay? And when I hit the done, remember, I'm date and time stamping this. We'll go back previous, get back to the beginning, take my jumpers off. Close in my shunt. Always remember to close that shunt back in. If you've ever run one t customer load test and a phantom load test, for you folks that go out there and run both of those tests on your site, you know that that's what you got to make sure you close that shunt back in when you get ready to run that customer load test or it's going to flip out a little bit. So now we're going to try whatever Mullins has got lined up here. So we will perform an integrated site test again. And once again, I will go with the 30 Okay, and then next. Okay, remember we're using two flexes, the two PCs, so I've got showing two there. Okay. Hmm. So my current is jumping all over the place. Got minus there. Let's hit over here on the showing 120 volts. Got power factor. Ooh. Does not look good. Vectors again. Hmm. Now this is where I see Mullins grinning. Okay, so this is where it's between the difference between primary and secondary. Okay, so without telling me about some PTs one time, Mullins already got me once. So, you got to watch if there is, if I, let's, let's, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's go back to this. Oh. Ah, these signals do not meet their normal threshold value secondary current A. 
So it's telling me I don't have um, enough current on my A phase. Okay, that's what it's saying right there. So let's, uh, I wanted to go back, if I could. Let's go here. I'm not doing the 30 seconds because I want to look at my vector again. Let's look at the vectors. Hmm. So I clearly have a problem on my current and from the way I'm looking right here and seeing the way this thing is jumping around so much, um, I know that I have a, it's a current issue. And I'm going to say here by looking at this that clearly this is no those primary versus secondary. The way this thing is flopping around so much. And I'm going to run my test here. I'm going to hit continue. So if I hit ignore, I'm going to guess that I don't get see what happens. Because I know if I don't have any primary current on A phase, I'm not going to have any secondary current on A phase, and I'm certainly not going to get any pulses. So let's see. What do you think, Sherlock? I'm thinking I don't have any um, A phase primary current, is what I'm thinking. I, I think it's a primary problem. And it's causing me problems, so I'm, I'm never going to get a pulse here. So let's try something. Let's see what we'll do. Just go back to here. So if the CT is out, or there's a problem with the CT primary, this is something that you would see. Mm -hmm. No current on the primary side. That's right. Yep, I'm seeing the same problem when I hit my secondary versus my primary. And then I hit my primary. I'm getting the same issue. So that's telling me that I've got the issue on primary and secondary. So I could, if I hit my primary button and I didn't have an issue, then that would tell me it's signifying that I got the primary on the secondary side. So don't forget to use your primary and your secondary button. So remember, I've t uh, when I've worked with you guys out in the field, we've talked about this. We're like forensics guys. Okay, if someone's dead on the floor, but why are they dead? You know, so here we are. We know we have a problem, but what is the problem? I can see I've got a problem on my current. Okay, is it primary? Is it secondary? By using that primary secondary button, if I had hit my primary button and it would have been solid, I would have said, well, my problem's on my secondary current. But because I hit the button on the primary and I'm showing the same exact problem, that's telling me I think I've got a problem on the primary side. So don't forget to use that button to let you look and toggle between primary and secondary, okay? Right. Okay. Everybody okay with that? All right. So now we will move on to our next curveball. We good? Oh. All right. We're going to do same thing. Integrated site test. Number two. Let's go to my 30 seconds. Three revs. No double wrap, so I'll leave it. Next. Everything looks good. So do you remember what our vector looked like before? It definitely didn't look like this. It looks like we've got, remember polarity reverse, we've got 180 degrees out from where we were before with our current here, okay? So our current has swung 180 degrees, okay? So my, my vectors have already pointed out to me what I believe to be the problem, which is I've got something I've got some 180 degrees out on my secondary current, so I've got a problem, okay, the player reversal. So let's go ahead and take a look here 
and uh, we will hit ah negative power factor. See, so that usually tells us. Okay, so now we'll run the test, look for a pulse. Mm. Now, let's think about this. Remember, there's what tools we have out there. We've got the tool tools, the test kits. We've got our knowledge of what we know from previous testing and what problems we've run into in the past. And we recognize it saying, oh, yeah, I remember I ran into that, you know, three months ago when I was testing it, blah, blah, blah. We have that, and we just got to think about these things. So, and we have our, our knowledge of past experience, and, and then things like this, these webinars. So I'm sitting here going, okay, negative 99.985. This is just looking like if I was testing a solar farm, and I didn't have it correct, right? And it would t so I've got the flows going in the wrong direction. I'm 180 degrees out on my current, so it would be just the same as getting received versus delivered, right? My current's going in the wrong way, so I get a negative registration, okay? So the, the meter, it, and there's some points here to remember, and we, we preach this all the time, is that's why you have to test these sites, and you have to test the meter and the CTs, because when you look at this, 99.9 .9 is, is, is great, okay? We love 99.985. The problem is the direction flow. Okay, my, my, I've got my flow of current is in the 180 degree out, polarity reverse direction, therefore it gives me this right here. Okay, so I'm going to hit next test. So it did what we thought we would do. If you reverse the flow of the current, then it's just the same, like I said, as getting received versus delivered, so it would give you a negative 99, a negative registration. And the Power Master knows. Graduated Phi Beta Kappa, by the way. The Power Master did. Pretty smart. So here we go. So we'll go ahead and continue anyway. Remember, this is the same when you've seen polarity reversal on other meter forms that we've tested out there. I get the red fail, and then I follow the red, and I come down here and go, there's my problem. I'm 180 degrees out. I've got polarity reversal. And everything that we've seen through this test through the registration, through the vectors, and now through this test, all points to the problem, which is, my answer is, that I have polarity reversal on my current, on my secondary current, on this site. Ah, I get the thumbs up from the administrator, Mr. Mullins. So we got that one right. So we will hit done and save it. And now we have one more. I want to graduate so bad. Stop the test. Okay, we're going to go back to our old IST, Integrated Site Test, number two. And I'm going to do my 30 seconds. And we're going to hit start test. Everything looks good. See up at the top here, 240. Before it was 120, so we get 240 now. But you see that my vectors look good, right? I don't have that 180 degree out. My current hadn't swung around, was 180 degrees out. <laughs> Definitely live with that. Oh. Tell them what they've won, Johnny. Y'all can live with that all day out there in the field, right? So our test looks good on that, and we have a positive registration. So it's not signaling any kind of issues there as far as polarity. So everything came out positive on that. So we're okay. 
And who loses in this? Utilities losing a tiny, tiny bit, right? If it's over 100, it's the opposite. Okay, so here we look good. Pass again. Green is good, remember? So we got good. We're 0.66 on the ratio there. Live with that all day long. Everybody loves that. So um, we got another good test on this one. The only difference I noticed on that, remember I pointed out that it was a 240 volt instead of a 120 volt. You know why they had a 240 volt charger? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh. Um, Oh, okay, so a different tap of transport service required it. We go 240 volt. I got you. And just so you guys know, I'm not saying the equipment's easy to use or anything. I had never tested a 3S until this morning. Just saying. Just saying. Or as one of the guys around here does all the time, I'm not saying, but I'm just saying. And everybody knows who that is. Okay. So, uh, so we're back to the uh, test. Let's go ahead and go to uh, recall data number seven. We talk about this all the time. We're taking a look at what we did. So we will expand. And remember, it's just a uh, tree diagram. So you come down. As soon as you come down, the expand keeps coming up because it keeps showing me pluses. So there's more there. So I hit expand again. And sure enough, there's a lot under there, right? So here are all the tests that we've done, the CT test, the customer load test, even the phantom load test. There's a plus next to the phantom load test because it's broken down into the three tests of full load, light load, power factor. So if you came down to it, the expand will come again so that you can see the full load, power factor, light load. So you can go down there and take a look at any test you want. You just hit select. I, it's just me, but I would recommend just take a quick look and make sure that you've saved everything. You didn't fat finger something or miss something before you disconnect everything, okay, and head to the next site because you sure hate to find out the next day that you missed one, okay? And so you could go up here and take a look at any of these if you wanted to. Just hit select. All right. So that is, uh, I believe that's all the testing that uh, we were going to do today. But now you're going to get to, uh, to take a look at the bunker here. So I'm going to, you want me to take this camera over here? Okay. Take off my gloves. I don't need PPA to operate the camera, do I? No. <laughs> all right. Not that camera. Not that. <laughs> nice. Okay. And I need to move slow? No, you're good. Am I good? Yeah. Okay. So you've seen our setup uh, here. So this is, the, uh, this is the normal, this is the bench. You guys have seen the bench before. You've heard me talk about the guy that cracks the whip on me in here, Jarrett Peters. So I'm going to swing it around. Control center, Jarrett Peters with all his monitors and everything. Mr. Mullins, there's Mr. Mullins. These lights that aren't blinding at all when you're standing up here. Now, I will show one thing. You see this floor right here? This, you guys aren't really getting to see. Jared cleaned all this up. So I came in here and he's made all new connections. You can see under here. So he switched his connections and everything. So now there used to be cables all over this floor. Like John Block said that time, I, uh, I literally did jerk down one of the tripods right after he jinxed me on it. So he said I was going to do it and I did it. And you can see out here, we have all of the equipment and everything ready to go out here in the bunker. The, the planning sessions, the hat winners go up there, so I'll make sure I don't miss that. We've got our self-contained board over here. So now you guys have actually seen the bunker here in Knoxville, Tennessee. All right? Set this back up. All right. Um, we really, really appreciate the continued support. Um, the numbers of the, the, the people that are watching this uh, have stayed pretty steady and great. We really, really appreciate it. And uh, if, you, uh, if you know of anybody else that could use this stuff, uh, please let them know. It is saved on the site. The, ones, the, the previous ones are saved on the site. 
Um, this one it usually just takes a couple of days. That's how good Jared is. And this will be on the website. But all of the previous ones of the previous six weeks, I can't believe it's been that long. Uh, the previous six weeks are, uh, it's going to be hard going back to the other way, right? I think I'm too behind, actually. Are you? Oh, okay, cool. So, uh, so Jared will get those out there, and you can take a look at those. But they're great reference material. Pull them up. Show them to some of your uh, coworkers or uh, bring them up. And as I said, man, this is a great chance to get personalized training. If you guys want to get your own training at your utility, grab a group of guys, set up an appointment with us, and we'll train on whichever meter, meter form, area scenarios, and piece of equipment you want to use on it, okay? We're getting people are starting to do this, and it's been great. So take advantage of that. Uh, if this isn't just sales, folks. This is also training. We want you guys to come home safe and be able to do your jobs more efficiently. That's what this is all about. So just let us know, and we will absolutely set something up for you guys, okay? Um, We've got the hat winners, everything's done. So last but not least, let's see, what am I forgetting? Oh, yeah, I know. I'm going to go ahead and pray. So <laughs> I'm going to pray this out. Um, uh, we, uh, once again, thank you guys so much for, uh, for your prayers and support for me when I was uh, wondering if I had it or not. Okay? Heavenly Father, thank you so much uh, for, uh, for today, for another day, for an, another day to, uh, to worship you, Lord, and glorify you. And just thank you so much for the opportunity to, uh, to try and hopefully help someone maybe learn to do their job safer and more efficiently. And Father, in the midst of all this, we're starting to see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel here. And, uh, but in the midst of all that, there's one thing to remember. We can always grab a hold of uh, Philippians uh, 4, 6, and that is don't be anxious about anything, but pray about everything. And uh, a little paraphrase there, but that's what it says. And Father, that's what we're doing now. We're we just want to, uh, to pray out anything, not to be anxious. It's tough not to be, but there is no one else can give us peace and comfort like you can. Thank you so much uh, for today again. Thank you so much for what you're doing for this country. We lift the country up to you. We lift our industry up to you and get us back going the way we were. And, and watch out for all those folks so they can get home safe, Lord. All these things I ask and say, according to the will of the one who paid it all, my brother, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you all. Be safe out there, all right? God bless.